I use Radium-223 today much like Al Simca was, but the agents have changed. So going back to what I stated about Al Simca, I use the best standard of care, excluding chemotherapy, and then add radium into that best standard of care. So what are the types of agents today that we use in terms of best standard of care? Um, better hormones. We have abiraterone and salutamide that are better hormones than what we used to use. Um, we do have bone targeted therapy that doesn't prolong survival but does diminish skeletal related events. Things like denosumab are in my practice probably predominating a little more toward denosumab as compared to the zoledronic acid. And it turns out that using these drugs together is probably the best way to do it. I don't view the radium as a monotherapy. I'm giving the radium, but I'm also giving the other drugs as well. The idea is to benefit the whole patient, not just a piece of the patient. So response is sort of dependent on the, the eye of the beholder. We can talk about soft tissue lesion shrinking, and we can talk about PSA is going down. We're going to define it as alkaline phosphatase is going down. You know, what's the definition of response? I think in the traditional world, we'd measure soft tissue because that's what we can measure. And radium, of course, doesn't touch the soft tissue. If we talk about PSA, then the PSA is derived from multiple components of which the bone is one. So the way I monitor the patients is very similar to what I stated earlier. First of all, I talk to my patients and I ask them, how are they doing? Such a simple question, but so important because if they're having problems, they can tell me. I monitor with the PSA, ALKFOS, and LDH, and it turns out that the alkaline phosphatase is a pretty reasonable marker of radium activity. You can see the alkaline phosphatase go down under circumstances when the radium is exerting its effects on the bone. I didn't say there was benefit from that, but I will say that if your alkaline phosphatase is not going down, you're more likely not to be able to benefit. In terms of the PSA, radium doesn't affect the PSA a great deal. However, the agents that I'm using in combination with radium may have a significant effect on the PSA. So I'm talking to my patient, I'm monitoring their labs, I'm trying to get my radium in. And by the way, I really want to get in six cycles of radium because that's where I believe the most benefit actually lies. If, if a patient has progression, then it really depends on what's the manifestation of that progression. And if I continue the radium or not, it depends on what I believe the overall benefit is. Now, radium is going to go to the bone, but it's not going to be affecting things like the liver or lung. If a patient develops something in the liver or lung, it doesn't necessarily mean that the radium is ineffective in the bone. It just means that it's ineffective in the liver or lung, which we knew it was going to be anyway. So sometimes I just change the therapy that I'm using concomitantly with radium. And sometimes I may stop the radium, for instance, if I need to go on to chemotherapy. But, you know, it turns out in terms of how we manage progression in a patient, it's somewhat variable depending on what the overall patient benefit is. It's not uncommon for one area to get worse while other areas are getting better. If that's the case, perhaps I just radiate the area that's getting worse. So managing progression depends on what type of progression it is, where is it located, is it symptomatic or not, and what tools are available for me to be able to attack it.